Hello students, I'm Molly Spearman, South Carolina State Superintendent of Education. There's no issue more important than your safety and well-being. We need you to show up to school each day ready to learn, and we need your help to identify and report any suspicious activity. The video that you are about to watch will provide guidance and scenarios that will help you identify and respond to potentially dangerous words and actions. By working together with your teachers and administrators, we can ensure that every South Carolina school has a safe and fun learning environment. You have noticed that a friend has begun to say and do things that worry you. He told you he is tired of people persecuting him, but the examples he gives do not seem reasonable to you. He has gotten into several bad fights with other youth in his neighborhood, and he mentioned that he has hit his mother several times recently. Last Tuesday, your friend mentioned that he has spent a lot of time on the internet reading about school shootings and that he understands why some students carry them out. Shortly after you arrived at school this morning, your friend told you that you should not be in the cafeteria during lunch. When you asked him why, he said that he doesn't want anything bad to happen to you. Before you can ask what he means, your friend turns and walks away. You feel very uneasy about the way your friend has been acting and what he has just said. What would you do? Would you talk to an adult? If so, who would you talk to and what would you tell them? If you don't know the answers to these questions, now is a good time to consider them just in case you ever have to make this type of decision. This resource has been developed to help you and other students become more aware of behaviors that could lead to school violence. No one can assure the safety of all students and school employees against school violence. And there are no guarantees that any combination of safety measures will be 100% reliable in preventing acts of violence. However, alert students and school employees have actually prevented many otherwise imminent school shootings. If your response to the scenario was to promptly talk to a responsible professional such as a teacher, school counselor, school administrator, law enforcement officer, or other responsible adult, you would have handled the situation well. Your actions would allow a team of professionals to evaluate the situation to see if your friend needs help. Bringing concerns of this type to a responsible adult is often one of the best ways to protect yourself, your friend, and others. There have been numerous times where students and adults exhibited what is known as leakage by making statements or behaving in alarming ways prior to an attack. The challenge is figuring out whether someone who has made a threat actually poses a threat. So. The more information officials have about individuals who exhibit questionable behavior or make questionable comments, the greater the chances that officials can accurately determine whether a person who has made a threat actually poses a threat, and if the person does pose a threat, how to manage the situation so that no one gets hurt. There are patterns of behaviors that can help identify youth who are at increased risk for a variety of negative outcomes, including violence. These are known as early and eminent warning signs of destructive youth behaviors. Before we look at these warning signs, it is extremely important to understand that there is no reliable profile of a school shooter. While we often see references to stereotypical descriptors of students who carry out active assailant attacks at schools, extensive research by the United States Secret Service and the United States Department of Education has determined that attempts to use profiles are unreliable. In reality, attackers have sometimes been more different from one another than they are alike. Attempting to categorize students as being more or less likely to pose a danger based on attributes such as gender, ethnicity, weight, family income levels, popularity, and other factors common to many students is unreliable. Instead, researchers have compiled a list of early and imminent warning signs that, when exhibited in groupings or in a certain context, can help identify youth who are at increased risk of negative outcomes, which can in some cases include violence. 
Being aware of warning signs can help you make difficult judgment calls if you have concerns. If the situation does not feel right to you, go with your intuition and talk to a responsible professional about your concerns. Sometimes, students, as well as adults, dismiss statements and behaviors of concern because they believe that violence could never happen here. In fact, this phrase is very common after a school shooting. Therefore, if you see or hear something that concerns you, say something. Early warning signs of destructive youth behaviors, which include the following, should be viewed primarily as indicators that a student may need help. Early warning signs. Not interacting with friends, fellow students, and teachers. Excessive feelings of isolation and being alone. Excessive feelings of rejection. Being a victim of violence. Feelings of being picked on and persecuted. Low school interest and poor academic performance. Expression of violence in writings and drawings. Uncontrolled anger. Patterns of impulsive and chronic hitting, intimidation, and bullying behaviors. A history of discipline problems. A history of violent and aggressive behavior. Prejudicial attitudes and intolerance for differences. Drug and alcohol use. Affiliation with gangs. Inappropriate access to, possession of, and use of firearms. Serious threats of violence. Imminent warning signs, on the other hand, indicate a higher degree of risk and the need for even more rapid or immediate intervention. Imminent warning signs. Serious physical fighting with peers or family members. Severe destruction of property. Cruelty to animals. Detailed threats of violence. Inappropriate possession and or use of firearms and other weapons. Self-injurious behaviors or threats of suicides. The research shows that it is important to focus on the words, actions, and other behaviors you see rather than who the student is, your relationship with them, or what they look like. This can help prevent either positive or negative bias from affecting your ability to detect situations that should be brought to the attention of a responsible adult. The Federal Bureau of Investigation recently produced a report which highlights pre-attack behaviors of active shooters in the United States. The report highlights that for active shooters under the age of 18, teachers and fellow students were often the most likely to see or hear behaviors of concern prior to the attack. The FBI notes further that each attacker displayed an average four to five concerning behaviors before the attack. One such concerning behavior is an individual's inability to let go of feelings of having been wronged. Referred to as injustice collectors in the Secret Service and Department of Education research, these individuals may have a laser-like, sustained, negative focus on a single situation or a number of situations in which they perceived they were wronged. While all people experience instances where they feel they have been wronged by others, injustice collectors tend to harbor grievance for an extended period of time. As a reminder, the presence of a single or multiple warning signs does not automatically indicate that a student has an increased risk for violence. Rather, it's an indication that the student may be at risk and some type of action or intervention is needed. Generally speaking, the greater the number and variety of early and imminent warning signs, the greater the need is for prompt intervention by adults. Consider this scenario. You are at school and you overhear someone saying, People are going to die here tomorrow. Which of the following do you think you would do? Shrug it off and assume that the student doesn't mean it. Talk to one of your friends about what you heard and ask them what to do. Promptly talk to a school employee or law enforcement officer. It is not possible to tell from this information whether the student actually poses a threat or not. However, the very nature of what has been said implies that the student could have an intention to kill people. Therefore, you should promptly talk to a school employee or law enforcement officer. Of course, concerning statements expressed via social media can have the same meaning as those communicated in person. Consider the following scenario. You are on social media looking through your friend's posts when you see that one friend has posted a photograph of themselves holding a firearm with the comment, tomorrow they will all pay for their crimes. What would you do? Report the incident to the social media site. 
ignore it and think your friend was having a bad day. Immediately talk to a school employee or law enforcement officer. As the following case shows, ignoring this type of social media post can be the wrong thing to do. A student in England made repeated threats on social media that he was going to cause harm to one of his teachers because he felt the teacher was picking on him. This student went on to kill his teacher during a class after no one reported the post to the school or law enforcement officials. Whether the threat is made by text or email, on social media or in person, the message itself determines what you should do. By being more aware of early and imminent warning signs in pre-attack behaviors and committing to reporting such behaviors to responsible adults, you and other students can play an important role in preventing or reducing the risk of school violence. I know this is a very difficult subject, but please remember, by working together with your teachers and administrators, you can make your school an even safer place. Thanks for watching.